Difficult roads lead to beautiful destinations. Zig Ziglar. I want to share with you about how I'm getting back on my feet again after the disaster of frugal February. This is Sugar Mama's Fireplay podcast and I am financial planner Canna Campbell from Sugar Mama TV. Now, a quick couple of housekeeping matters before we start today's podcast and that is my website is down. My website is down because it actually got hacked and it got so badly infected with spyware that we're literally having to rebuild it from scratch. Now, don't worry, those amazingly helpful, inspiring and motivating calculators will be back. We just have to rebuild them again from scratch. And yes, the budget template will be available as soon as that website is fresh and healthy again and ready to go live. So I'll keep you posted on my Instagram account about that. Now, the second housekeeping matter is my general advice warning. I know I always sound like a broken record with this, but it's important that you understand all of my content is always educationally based and not personal advice, investment advice or strategic advice. Anything that you guys listen to and think, ooh, that sounds really cool, please go and speak to a financial planner and ask them if it's appropriate for you. And if not, what other things can you do as well? Now, today I want to talk to you about, I guess, financial resilience and getting back on your feet again. Maybe you can get back on your feet again with me. Now, the other day I was checking my messages on Instagram and I have to say, I absolutely love it when you guys DM me. You give me feedback, you give me ideas, sometimes you even give me great hacks and things to go and look at and consider. And just so you know, it is actually me that you're getting a message from, it's not staff. But the other day I got this message and it left me feeling really flat and sad. And the message went along the lines of this. Hey, Kanna, uh, love your content, love your podcast. They're really inspiring and motivating. But right now, everything is just so expensive and it just feels too overwhelming. I just can't see the point. I really can't be bothered right now to work on my financial goals. And as I said, this left me feeling flat and sad and deflated. And I can't lie. Like I can't like sugarcoat and say, don't be crazy. That person is right. Everywhere you look, every product, every service, it is so much more expensive than it used to be. Rent's going up, mortgage is going up, electricity is going up, food continues to go up. Like even a takeaway coffee the other day, $5.50. The more the more you look, the more things are going up. So I can't sugarcoat it. I need to be honest with you. We are living in a very, very expensive world. And it's not just in Australia, it's like this pretty much everywhere. A girlfriend of mine just came back from LA and she was telling me that uh she, to get like a just a really basic breakfast in a very basic cafe was like $40. And she said it really took the joy out of her, her trip. But I want to say this though, even though the world is expensive, it is, it is hard, it is harder. I will tell you that no matter what situation you are in, whether you are drowning in debt or you're swimming in savings, there is always, always something that you can do today to improve your financial situation and your financial well-being that will dramatically impact and improve your long-term wealth. And you can quote me on that. I never want to hear you say, why bother? That is a defeatist attitude. That is one that keeps you completely stuck and to be really honest, wallowing in your own pity. And for some people, let's be really, really honest here because I'm going to get passionate. Sometimes this is actually wallowing in laziness. I'm not saying it to everyone. I'm saying that for some people who say, why bother? Now, let me share this with you. Or you may probably already know this if you've listened to lots of my podcasts and been following me for years. When I became a single mother, I cleared out my savings to pay for my legal bills. And on top of that, I had to take a huge, huge financial loan to pay my way out of my marriage. So much so that my solicitor at the time said, I don't recommend this, but I just didn't care. I wanted out and I was, I would like sell the clothes off my back. And 
I have to say my mental health was like in a thousand pieces. I was a shell of a human being. I've even shared that I, I have really bad um, post-traumatic stress syndrome and I had postnatal depression. And I, at one stage I was even in hospital for that because I, I needed help. Wait, this is not about my mental health, I promise. It's about getting back on my feet again. Anyway, a lot of people, including my ex-husband, thought I wouldn't survive. You know, they really mocked me, humiliated me, and some even took huge delight and gloated in that thought of me not surviving, basically drowning, really struggling, and that I was having, going to have a life of pain and misery because of the situation I had created for myself to get out of the situation. Now, whilst they may have thought that, and I know some, a lot of people did think that, I refused to accept that. I refused to be defined or stuck in my current situation. Don't get me wrong. I knew it would take time and I knew it would take a lot of hard work, dedication and commitment. But what I knew was it would make the biggest and best difference if I wasted no time and I choose or chose to use my time wisely. So day by day, week by week, month by month, I slowly got on my feet again. And I was frightened. I was anxious. I was overwhelmed. And there were days where I was just in a complete despair, like fetal position, having panic attacks. But dollar by dollar, cent by cent even, my emergency savings started to replenish and rebuild. And then once that was done, I was able to look at using all of those resources that I've been using to build up the emergency savings again to now use towards getting my mortgage repayments back on top again and making even extra rep repayments. Sure, they were maybe only little, but they counted and they really do add up, particularly when you take into consideration it's the early stages of the mortgage that you have the biggest and best impact in paying it off as quickly as possible. And guess what? On top of this, this moment where I was in a really fragile mentally, emotionally and financially situation, the $1,000 project was born. And today that project is worth just over $234,000. And it pays me a growing passive income stream. Now, again, as a complete transparent disclaimer, disclaimer, disclosure, there is a margin loan element within that but it's a very small margin loan and it's a margin loan that is slowly and steadily reducing over time. But what I'm trying to tell you is because it's not just time that heals all financial wounds, it's what you do with that time that helps heal all those financial wounds, not only quickly, but with the most amount of growth, insight, awareness, and I guess financial intelligence that only multiplies from here. Now, if I had that attitude, why bother? I would still be stuck with no savings and with the same very big, very, very scary mortgage. I'd have no savings. That $1,000 project wouldn't ex exist and I would definitely have no additional or I have no investments. And let's be honest, there is nothing attractive about someone who is feeling bitter and wallowing in their own self-pity party. Think about it. It's not attractive. People like positive people. People like people who are looking for solutions. People, who, they, they, everyone loves a good rags to riches story. You need to make your, your life a rags to riches story if you're in a really crap situation right now. It is contagious. It is inspiring. It is exciting. It is like the most amazing thing to look back and go, wow, look how far I've come. Look what I've learned. What I, look what I've, how I've grown. Look how I'm a better person from going through for all this. We all know that from tough times is where our most profound, deepest and most incredible growth happens. It's almost a blessing in disguise. Now, I'm going to be honest with you as well. No matter how rich you are, setbacks, challenges, they are a natural part of life. You have to learn to face them. You have to learn to fix them and you have to learn to thrive on from them. No one is immune from setbacks and challenges, even financial traumas. When I first launched this podcast and I explained how my podcast worked, I explained the analogy of the ocean 
and that I am teaching you how to surf the ocean. I'm teaching you how to ride the waves, how to preserve your energy, how to you know surf those waves so you can get in the green room, catch a barrel and have a really great time. That is what my channel is all about. And that includes how learning how to surf those big, scary, frightening waves, how to navigate yourself through a rip or a dangerous current, how to navigate the bad weather, how to make sure you preserve your energy supplies when there are breaks in the waves. This is what I'm all about. I'm not all about like showing you how to get rich and wealthy and financially abundant. Of course, that's incredibly important. But I want to learn, like, make you know how to handle the, the, the tough times too. I want you to have great financial resilience. So today I want to talk to you about the disaster of frugal February, but not talking about what happened again. I've already done that. I don't need to remind you. I'm going to talk to you about the solutions, how I'm getting back on my feet again. Now, I know I just said, I'm not going to talk about what happened. I am just for a very split second, because if you haven't listened to the disaster of frugal February, please go back and listen. But if you have listened to it and you can't quite remember what happened, here is a quick recap, plus a couple of little extra things that happened after recording the podcast, because I finished it up a couple of days before frugal February ended, just to really stick the knife in the, in my back with the frugal February. So basically it started with Giuseppe needing a lot of dental work, almost $8,000. And by the way, we could only do half his mouth. We still have to do the other half. Uh, we had the garage door break with my car in it. And we then discovered not only after paying two and a half thousand dollars to get it opened and fixed, it has to be replaced. We also had an insurance claim for very bad, bad, bad water damage in our house. And I'm saying bad three times to stop myself from swearing about how horrific it has. Like I swear there's a curse or a jinx on this house sometimes. The damage basically had a pipe exploded in the house. We didn't know, created large amounts, very large amounts of black mold. If you follow me on my lifestyle account, Canna Campbell Official, you'll see my wardrobes, what I was talking about. You could see a little bit of it. Damage actually got worse and worse because the claim was with the insurance company for six months. Then, so our claim got rejected, it wiped out our emergency savings and it wiped out Tom's special savings that he set aside because our, the damage was so bad and the insurance company decided last minute not to, not to um, accept it. And we had to use all our emergency savings to quickly get a builder in to make our house safe again and functioning again. And it, it also meant we had to use up all of Tom's special savings. Now, just to dig that knife in deeper, the, I think the last day or the second last day of frugal February, our fridge and freezer broke. And the original owners from this house had this very, very expensive European fridge. It's not your normal like Fisher and Paykel, Samsung kind of stock standard fridge. It was this very expensive, I think it's a German one. And we basically have to replace like for like because it's an integrated kitchen. And it's, I think the fridge and the freezer, last time I looked, I've been shopping around like a mad woman. So if anyone knows anywhere to get these at a discount, please let me know. But the fridge and freezer are each five and a half thousand dollars. Like kill me now. And it gets worse. The gas stove of ours, all the Bunsen burners have pretty much gone with the exception of one. And that one Bunsen burner that's left, it takes me 22 minutes to soft boil an egg. Like this is why I'm like pulling my hair out with frustration. So as I said, our emergency savings were wiped out and Tom's special savings. And ironically, the most, ex the most expensive month of my life was actually the month where I'm trying to be the most frugal. So this is normally a month where I like find new savings and it's like a, a welcomed step forward. But instead it was one step forward, 3,768,752 steps back. But as far as back as I, as I might be and Tom might be and we are as a family financially right now, I will definitely make sure that I get us back on our feet again and I get us back on our feet again as quickly, as easily and as efficiently as possible. Even in a crazy expensive world, a very overwhelming world that we are all living in right now. So this is what I'm doing. Number one, acceptance and mindset. All right, it's a crappy situation. At times I even felt sad. So did Tom. We both felt incredibly frustrated. And I know that this is going to be quite possibly a, a painfully slow period in trying to rebuild our savings. But guess what? It's out of my control. 
I didn't do anything wrong or silly. It is what it is. Things happen in life, as I said. I have to accept that. Look at what I control, look at what I can't control. And if I just sit around focusing on the loss of our emergency savings, the, the fact that we have spent all this money basically to get our house back to square one again, it's not like we've got a, a new kitchen or a flashy new bathroom or, you know, we've been able to use this, you know, to, you know, add value to our house. Certainly not. We've basically got it back to what it was when we moved in. So if we focus on all the doom and gloom, that's just going to keep us stuck and it serves no value to me or my family. So I'm not going to waste time thinking about it. I'm going to get on with it, as Tom says. So Tom and I, together, we drew a line in the sand after accepting all those negative feelings. We accepted them, we acknowledged them, we let them go, we let them pass. And as I said, we drew a line in the sand to promise now to move forward and focus on the solutions. I also have been working on my mindset, our mindset. And whilst I really focus on my mindset, if I ever catch Tom wallowing it with a bad mindset, I quickly help correct him and bring him back up again, as he does with me. Because I truly believe there is a blessing in disguise in everything. And whilst I have no idea what this blessing in disguise is here yet, I know that at some point in my journey, I will find out what it is and everything will make perfect sense. And I'll be kind of glad as to what has happened. I know that sounds a little bit naive, but Trust me, this is, this is something I'm very experienced on. So in the meantime, I'm focusing on keeping a very positive mindset, focusing on the feelings of having our emergency money restored. You know, that feeling of relief, that feeling of having pride, pride and going, wow, we're doing it. We're getting back on our feet again. Yes, it might be dollar by dollar or even $10 by $10, but seeing that we're making progress again and we're making progress in the right direction. So I'm looking forward to having the faith and confidence back. This has knocked us for six. Uh, it, it's, it is a big blow. Like, and I haven't disclosed the number, but the people who know me know the number and they're like, oh my God, how are you guys coping? And I'm really looking forward to having that faith again and finding that strength again. I know it's there, but, and I'm only going to find it when I see those, that the money slowly build. That day when I, you know, it's, it's an extra hundred dollars there or an extra five dollars there, knowing that I'm getting there. It's it's paying off. We're heading in the right direction. I'm also doing a lot of, I know I promise not to say this word, but I feel like I need to. I'm also doing a little bit of visualization. I was going to say manifestation. I'm going to say visualization here because I'm sure a lot of you are sick of me using that word. But imagining that feeling of seeing our savings, our emergency savings back up again and back up at the right amount and actually the right amount for us because this has also been a, maybe what this is, maybe one of the blessings of disguise is I realized that what I calculated as our emergency savings wasn't actually enough, which says a lot because a lot of people like to downplay how much emergency money they really need. I'm also really focusing on getting excited about achieving this goal because guess what? The moment our emergency money is back in stock, we can then move on to those other goals of ours. And those goals that include getting on top of our mortgage repayments, getting on top of our investing, looking at, you know, ways we're saving on tax, we're, you know, looking at our superannuation. So I'm looking forward to being and feeling really proactive and progressive again with all of our other goals once I've got the emergency money sorted. And also feeling really resourceful, really reactive and really creative. I'm, you know, all the things, new things I might discover from having to quickly rebuild our emergency savings as quickly as possible. So... Number two is I've opened up a new emergency savings account and I've got a nickname that emergency savings account with the new number, the new emergency number that I have to rebuild to. Now, the reason why I've re-nicknamed it and it's got that number in there is to remind me every time I log into my internet banking, that's how much emergency money we now need to have saved up as quickly as possible. And doing that constantly reminds me, keeps me accountable it even gamifies my financial cash flow. And I will also admit that this special savings account, which is nicknamed our XXX dollar emergency savings account, is actually offsetting one of our loans. So whilst this is not strategic advice or personal advice in any way whatsoever, we are using a personal savings account that's going to offset the interest on one of our loans. Now, the reason why I've chosen to do this is I could earn, say, 
for example, 3% from a savings account. But if I have it in an offset account or a redraw facility, it means I'll be saving 5.5% in interest. So when I looked at the tax savings and the efficiency, it made sense for us to have our emergency savings based and held within an offset account against one of our loans. So please, again, reminder, not personal advice or strategic advice, speak to your bank, speak to your mortgage broker, speak to your financial planner, speak to your accountant about what is right for you. Number three is our budget. Now, I, again, I know everyone is probably looking at this going, Hannah, we can't do our budgets anymore. I agree with you, I'm in the same boat. Our budget is as trim as it possibly can. There is nothing more I can cut down or cut out permanently or even temporarily. We are running a tight ship. But what I can do is really keep an extra closer eye on our family budget to make sure we are really staying on track. And whilst I, as I said, there's nothing I can actually cut out of this, it's going to make me feel a lot more in control as I try and recover from a situation where it felt like our lives were spiraling out of control and is really good at helping me keep a positive mindset and finding that faith and that strength again. And I really also believe that when you do your budget and do it properly, you sleep better. And that's that's worth a lot of money in itself, if you ask me. Step number four is that we have looked at our goals. Our goals are all focused on rebuilding this emergency money. And so I've set lots and lots of mini, mini goals. Goals for the day, goals for the week, goals for the fortnight, goals for the month, goals for the year. There are lots of them. And all are positively aligned to rebuilding our emergency savings back up to the new number that it needs to be, the new realistic number that it needs to be in this day and age. And I will be honest with you, I don't actually have enough ideas to rebuild the, to up to the new amount, but I have faith that as I work through the ideas that I've got so far, that new ones, new ideas, new opportunities, new connections, they will flow my way as I work through what I can do right now and the ideas that I already have. As I start to build momentum, as I start to see progress, new ideas, opportunities, hacks, tips, tricks, they're going to present themselves. I have faith in that. So this is really important. And the thing with like little goals is, especially when they're short term mini goals, is it gives you a sense of progress and progress fuels success. It's, and I, I'm gonna do this quick analogy very quickly, but it's kind of like that fitness goal. When you track and monitor your fitness and you go for a run and you realize, oh wow, I ran an extra 200 meters further than yesterday or the day before, you start to feel really good about yourself and you feel inspired to keep going. You go, well, wonder if the day after tomorrow I can maybe run an extra 400 meters further. So that's the importance and the value and the secret hack that I genuinely believe in of, of short, bite-sized, mini manageable and therefore achievable goals, which are all positively aligned to one big goal. And it is, the proof is in the pudding with a thousand dollar project. I've literally built that portfolio out of, in, like with no savings, nothing out of my salary by simply hustling, savings, and proactive transfers, you know, being mindful of my money, having these fun short-term financial challenges like frugal February. Um, and that, that every dollar has really added up. So that is a testament to this strategy of lots of mini short-term goals. It works. It really does work. And The Thousand Dollar Project is actually a best-selling book So and around the world. Now, the fifth thing I want to share with you, and this is probably the most important thing, is I've shifted our priorities. You see, I have... We've, we've got to rebuild these emergency savings. We've got to, we're a family of five and we have two big dogs and we have a lot of responsibilities. Tom and I are also self-employed running our own businesses. So we don't have like annual leave and sick leave. Like we don't have a lot of those fallbacks. We don't have super guarantee from our employers. So I've had to really shift our priorities. And what I mean is I've had to pause any extra repayments that we were making on our home loan and our investment loans. I've even had to pause any new investing, and I've had to pause our dividend reinvestments. Again, please, this is not strategic advice. I'm just sharing this with you as to give you ideas and solutions, if you, you know, and, and I guess a sense of faith and confidence to know that you're not alone if you're having a tough time. Now, by pausing the dividend reinvestments, getting them paid to my cash account, I can then immediately 
the moment they're deposited, transfer them into our new separate emergency savings goal account. And every step is going to help me take me closer. Yes, don't get me wrong. I'm annoyed about this. It's not ideal because I would normally love reinvesting my dividends for future compounding growth opportunities. So, but it is what it is. I'm doing my best right now. And I hate to share this with me, with you, with me. I hate to share this with me as well. I have had to pause a holiday savings plan. That's right. We, the emergency money is way more important than a holiday. If we go and suffer, <clears throat> I'm starting to lose my voice again. If we go and suffer another emergency, we're screwed. We're stuffed. Because what else are we going to, we're going to have to reach for a credit card. We're going to have to borrow money from a friend or a family member. We don't want to do that. Having emergency money is more important than going on a family holiday right now. And just because we can't afford to go on a family holiday, there are still lots of things we can do. You know, we can uh, go camping. Uh, we can we can camp even in our own backyard. There are lots of things we can do creatively. So it's not disastrous. And as I said, the quicker I do this, the quicker I can go back to getting back to building a holiday savings. Stop the, the um, re, I guess, reorganize the dividend reinvestment plan. Go back to investing. Go back to the extra mortgage repayments. This spare money must go into the emergency savings right now. So I have reprioritized our priorities. Number six is we're hustling. You know, Tom and I, and maybe this is, might be another blessing in disguise, but Tom and I have really looked to the way that we earn money and the way that we manage our money and the way we can earn extra money through looking at the efficiency of our businesses. During Frugal February, we made a, a quick trip to Hong Kong for Tom to explore a potential business opportunity. And we, with the disaster of Frugal February, it actually made us look at the idea of Hong Kong and this business opportunity there and look at, okay, we need to make this happen a lot quicker because this is something will help us get our emergency savings back on track again. Now, don't worry, I'm not moving to Hong Kong. I love, I'd love to. I, Hong Kong is one of my most favorite cities. But it's really making us explore things that we wouldn't have explored, but it's actually making us look at things quickly. Not wasting time, not daydreaming or dil dilly-daddling around going, oh, yeah, that would be nice. We're actually stepping up and going, right, can we make this work? Is it worth our time? How, what are the benefits? Do the numbers stack up? All right, yep, no, yes, okay, let's do it. Let's get on with it. So things are happening you know, from a hustling perspective, I'm selling things online, doing a clear out of stuff. Um, I'm going to look at some selling some of the stuff in my wardrobe next weekend on Canna Campbell Official, my Instagram account. I've also gone hell for leather on the market research. I joined a new website that someone messaged me the other day called Askable, which do online savings. And I get so excited when I get a text message saying, hey, there's another survey here. You can do one for $5 or I did one this morning for eighty dollars, and and I did one to potentially do one for a hundred dollars, and one even potentially for five hundred dollars. I also am following this, another one called Say So, where you can also register to do profiles and surveys and stuff like that. I haven't done that one yet, like I've registered, but I'll keep you posted if it's any good. And of course, I always share the market research jobs that I do and get emails about on my Instagram stories at Sugar Mama TV. Now, the thing with hustling is you must immediately transfer those savings the moment you have hustled that money. Don't let it sit in your wallet. Don't let it sit in your everyday account. Get that hustling money proactively out of your account towards your saving goal or whatever your financial goal might be before it evaporates, before it gets spent on something else that you don't want it to. Make that money count. Make that money take you one, two, three, four, five, six steps closer to achieving your goal because that's going to save you time. It's going to, it's going to give you re, a better resource of money. It's going to give you energy back that you can then plow into doing other things to bring extra money in your life and take you closer. So put yourself out there if you're hustling. Make sure everyone knows that you're trying to hustle. The power of the community is incredibly important. Go and speak to your accountant. Ask them for ideas. And that's also another good point is Tom and I have spoken to our accountants and asked them a couple of different ideas and suggestions as to what we can do to quickly rebuild this emergency money. And I'm really getting creative with ideas and suggestions. Um, I think both Tom's accountant and my accountant's I started to get a little bit worried. Of course, I would never recommend you sail too closely to the wind, but I like to get a little bit creative in my suggestions. And yes, they might be laughing at them saying, no, you cannot do that. But you know what? It's worth exploring because you never know. It might be a stroke of genius in one of those crazy ones. And then finally, I'm looking at the blessings of this. As I said at the beginning of this podcast, having a low vibration attitude and a laziness, a... Um, just a throwing of the towel and giving up despair. It's not going to help me in any way whatsoever. So we're focusing on the blessings in disguise. 
We're focusing on what we have, what we are grateful for. For example, we have a, a home. We have a, a roof over our heads. We have our friends. We have our health. You see, the disaster of what happened to our house, we had really, really bad, bad toxic mold, like a meter by two meters a wall covered in a really toxic mold. I had to close that room off and I couldn't let the kids go in for six months. And we're lucky that no one so far, touch wood, has gotten sick from that toxic black mold. We're lucky that no one got hurt. We had um, things going wrong with walls. Like imagine if one of those ceilings can, like collapsed. Someone could have gotten hurt or even worse. Like thank goodness that didn't happen. Thank goodness we found it now and not in two, three, four, five years time where the damage was could have been way more serious and, and the structural damage, I hate to even think about that. And we're also looking at the lessons behind this. What are we going to learn from this? How are we going to become out of this wiser, stronger, greater insights are we going to gain? And of course, everything that I learned from this disaster of frugal February and I, as I learn about rebuilding our emergency savings, I promise to share with you. Because what I'm hoping by me, and I'm an oversharer, if you haven't noticed, I'm hoping by me sharing with you my fails, that I prevent you or protect you from having a similar situation to me so that you think, oh gosh, I'm so glad I heard about can and this. I now know we need more emergency savings or I now know that I need to go and check this or I now know I need to go and update this or change this. I'm hoping that this prevent is preventative and protective. And I'm also looking at learning. I might discover some new habits, some new hacks along the way. And things, the thing is, like with all of this stuff, I'm only going to learn new, whatever new stuff I can then carry forward. You see, one though, once those emergency ma- savings are reestablished and reestablished to the right amount that we need in this expensive world, I get to then channel things that I've learned and gained and grown to now target extra payments on our home loan again and make up for lost time there and get back on top of our passive income investing strategy and our debt recycling strategy. And I can switch back on those automatic dividend reinvestment plans. And I can look at maybe even increasing our debt recycling strategies because deep down, I know that once this emergency savings is rebuilt, we can make up for lost time and lost opportunities. Because as I said, it's not the time, it's what you do with the time. And I know at the end of the day, deep in my heart, and not just for me, but for anyone else that's trying to get back on their feet financially after a couple of blows, that you will be so glad that you and I never ever gave up and that we never ever said, why bother? There is a blessing in disguise behind this. I am absolutely adamant and guarantee this. And when I find that, I can't wait to share with you. All right. So as I now wrap up this podcast, I thank you to everybody for listening to this. I want to remind you, no matter what situation you're in right now, you can always improve the situation right now. It might be slow. It might be painful, but it will be in the right direction. You will be in a better place if you put your head, heart and mind to it. You do need to accept the situation you're in and draw a line in the sand and focus on supercharging your mindset so that you can rebuild from here and rebuild stronger, wiser, smarter. You also need to take a fresh approach to this situation. It was quite cathartic and like a a fresh leaf in opening up a new savings account that is going to offset the interest on one of our home loans. It's kind of, it was a little bit exciting, kind of like a new year's resolution almost that feeling. You also need to remember to look at your budget. And whilst I understand and I'm with you in the same boat in that you can't trim anything more from your budget, you're running it as tight as you possibly can. The power of the budget will help you keep you on the straight and narrow. It will help you manage your cash flow responsibly and stay on track and give you that good night's sleep. The next thing is to make sure you set yourself mini short-term bite-sized achievable goals that are all positively aligned to the one goal that is really important to you. And I will point out, as I said, we've reprioritized our priorities, which is my fifth step. And that is because it's freeing up all our resources so we can really go as quickly as and efficiently as possible to make sure we get these these emergency savings rebuilt as quickly as possible. So look at what other things you can pause or put down to a minimum payment plan or even sometimes maybe even delay 
uh, to make sure that you rebuild your priorities. Now, of course, I would never recommend someone cancel or stop any insurance policies because they are incredibly valuable. And I would never, you know, recommend someone jeopardize their credit rating to rebuild emergencies. Set whatever you can as a minimum payment plan to keep your credit check healthy. Make sure you prioritize your financial well-being from a preventative point of view, which is insurances, particularly personal insurances. And then, of course, the moment you have achieved that goal, you can go back to focusing on your other priorities again. It's not forever. It's just to help you, I guess, buy some time and get back at your head above water again and feel good again about your financial future and allow that faith and confidence to be restored. And then, of course, hustle. Don't be defined by your current situation, by your current job, or your current salary. Look at what else you can do, things outside of the square. What can you sell? What can you declutter? What market research jobs can you do? Can you start an ebook? Can you start a new program? Can you do some dog walking? Can you do some babysitting? Can you do some dictation? Can you do proofreading? What skills do you have that you can maybe put on Airtasker? Maybe you've got a spare bedroom that you can rent out. Maybe you've got a car that you can rent out. Maybe you've got a dress that you can rent out or some shoes or a handbag. I was talking to a, a, a new friend of mine and she was sharing with me that she started up a side hustle business with renting her dresses out. And she said she, and it was only, she only taught, told me this as I was saying how I'm on a tight budget at the moment and I need a new dress to wear to an event. She's like, don't buy it. I have a, a, a side hustle business. I have 416 dresses available to rent out. She's like, this is a great business. It gives me like great cash flow so I can like stay afloat financially. Like, like how brilliant is that? And she said it started out with just a couple of dresses that she bought that she felt really guilty about buying for herself and decided to help remove that guilt and reduce that guilt by renting them out. And she realized how quickly they dresses pay for themselves. Anyway, that's another podcast in itself. But think outside the square. And perhaps it's time to look at a new job. Perhaps it's time to ask for that promotion or that pay rise. Perhaps, and this is very extreme, so don't take me like seriously on this, but, but maybe not. Maybe it's time to now look at moving country where it's a different tax rate. There's a different career opportunity for you. There's, you know, different uh, like cost of living even. Like explore everything. You never know where you might land. And then, of course, finally, focus on the blessings. There is a blessing in disguise. Trust me on this. You will look back and go, wow, I'm kind of glad that happened because because of that, I now know this, this, and this, and I now know how to do this, this, and that. And I feel so proud. I feel so accomplished. I feel so in control. I feel so empowered and motivated. And that's now taking me to a place where I can now look at doing self-managed super fund. I can now look at investing. I can now look at borrowing to invest. I can now look at my retirement. I can now looking at my retirement for a bigger, better retirement where it happens sooner and a bigger income. There is something behind all this madness, I promise you. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here. 40 minutes. I'm getting better at bringing my podcast down. Thanks again, everyone, for listening. Please make sure you are following me on Instagram at Sugar Mama TV. Of course, I'm on TikTok as well. And of course, on my lifestyle account, if you want to see inside my crazy world with Tom and the kids and the dogs, at Canna Campbell Official. All right, everyone, thanks for listening. Ciao for now.